Today we're going to rig a sunfish. We do things in a certain order, and we'll explain why as we go along. First, we bring out the rudder tiller and the dagger board. Remember to slide the tiller under the main sheet bridle. Some people call this a traveler. If you forget and put it on top, you won't be able to steer the boat. It takes a little finesse to get the grooves in the hinge pin lined up with the gudgeons on the boat. Often, a little wiggle will help the pin to fully seat. Next, check the wind. We want the boat's bow facing into the wind. Lay the spars on the deck using the rudder in the up position and the dagger board to keep them in place. Remember, the spars and sail go on the port side, the left side of the mast. Free up the halyard and prepare to raise the sail. Make sure the halyard is free to run from its attach point on the top spar to the top of the mast. Feed the end through the fair lead in the mast cap toward the side of the mast with the cleat. Slide the mast through the gooseneck ring and raise it to place it in the mast step in the deck. Don't forget to hang on to the halyard. Pull the halyard to raise the upper spar and the sail. To raise the sail all the way to the top of the mast, reach down and lift the gooseneck ring. We tie a slip knot in the halyard about two feet above the cleat. Then we feed the halyard tail through the slip knot and bring it down to fit over the cleat. This provides a two to one purchase to tightly draw the sail against the top of the mast. You may have to lift the gooseneck again to get a full hoist. Tie a cleat knot, a figure eight around the cleat. Secure the last turn with an extra twist. Now the halyard tail goes through the deck fair lead. Over the gooseneck. And back through the fair lead. A little push down on the lower spar while holding the halyard tightly keeps the lower spar from rising in stronger winds and another cleat knot. This is really important. If you capsize, this cleat knot keeps the sail from falling off the boat and heading for the lake bottom. What do we do with the extra halyard? We tie it to the junction of the upper and lower spars with a bowline. Going downwind in light air, we can pull on this line to bring the sail out to about 90 degrees, the right position for going dead downwind. Next, we rig the main sheet. Unfasten the coiled line and feed it through the ratchet block. The block turns in only one direction, so check that first. This kind of turning block, or in the case of letting the sheet out, this non-turning block uses friction to keep the load on your hands and arms low. Tie a stopper knot in the end of the sheet. We don't want it to get away while we're sailing. The other end of the main sheet gets tied to the bridle with a bowline. You need to know at least three knots to rig a sunfish. A cleat hitch, a bowline, and a figure eight or stopper knot. Look those up. We're almost done.
Next, we fasten the bungee cord attached to the dagger board around the mast and clip it to itself. This keeps the dagger board in the boat and supplies tension to hold the dagger board in a position partially raised. It's time to go sailing. To de-rig the boat, just do everything in reverse order. But first, align the boat facing into the wind. Don't be afraid to leave plenty of main sheet tail available for securing the coil. Three or four feet is about right. You may have to yank the halyard strongly to remove the slip knot. Slowly drop the sail, keep it under control. Stretch the sail out away from both spars. Fold it twice toward the spars. Then roll it tightly. At this point, put the coiled main sheet between the two spars tucked inside the rolled sail. The next step is tricky, but it's a great way to secure the sail. First, tie a bowline in the end of the halyard. Pass the halyard through the bowline loop to make a lasso. Slide the lasso over the end of the spars to a point about 18 inches above the halyard attach point on the upper spar. Now, wrap the doubled halyard around the sail all the way to the forward end. Adjust your wraps so that there is just enough halyard to tightly slip over the end of one spar. And that does it. It's a great system. Take down the mast and the rig is ready to be put away. One more trip to fetch the blades and put them away. Here's a tip. The rudder cheeks must be pulled down for the rudder to fit firmly on the wall hook. And if you want to make the Commodore happy, you'll pull down all the rudder cheeks that other sailors forgot. If you have any questions about any part of the rigging process, ask one of the club's instructors.